The DNA synthesis reaction requires a DNA template strand, the enzyme DNA polymerase and deoxynucleotide triphosphatase or DNTPs. The DNTPs are building blocks for making a new strand of the DNA. The DNA polymerase cannot start the synthesis on its own. An enzyme called primase begins the task by creating short sequence of RNA that is complementary to the DNA. This segment called as RNA primer provides a hydroxyl group on its 3' prime end. The DNA polymerase can add DNTPs only to the pre-existing 3' prime hydroxyl group. It loads itself there and can start attaching nucleotides by extending the 3 hydroxyl. A DNTP enters the reaction site. This base is complementary to the base in opposite strand and the two form hydrogen bonds. The DNA polymerase forms a covalent bond between the 3' prime hydroxyl group at the end of the strand and the 5' prime alpha phosphate group of the new arrival. The DNA polymerase contain, continues along the template strand, nucleotide by nucleotide. Each new nucleotide provides the 3' prime hydroxyl group for the next reaction to occur. Because the 3' prime end points in the direction of the DNA elongation, the DNA polymerase is said to add nucleotides from 5' prime to 3' prime direction. It has this directionality of synthesis and this directionality is always maintained in that order. DNA synthesis is very similar in all organisms. But let's look at the detailed process in bacterium E. coli. E. coli DNA synthesis begins at a particular location on chromosome where the protein open the double-stranded DNA into a bubble of single-stranded DNA. The strands are anti-parallel, meaning that they are parallel to one another, but oriented in opposite directions. The 3' prime end of one strand points the same direction as 5' prime end on the other direction. So this is very important to consider while understanding polymerase. Enzymes called helicases enter that bubble and continues to unwind the DNA. The open DNA provides the replication machinery with access to the nucleotides in the strands. Single-stranded DNA binding proteins or SSBs bind to the open DNA and prevents the strands from closing back together. The unwinding process creates tension further down the helix. An enzyme called topoisomerase nicks the DNA and then untwists and reseals it to relieve this tension. Primase enter the replication bubble and add short segment of complementary RNA to the single stranded region of the template DNA. These RNA primers are anti-parallel to the template strands that are attached to. Helicase continues to open the double helix and primase follows behind. The RNA primers provide the hydroxyl group at the 3' prime end. This group allows DNA polymerase to add additional nucleotides to the chain. The DNA polymerase that E. coli uses for this purpose is called DNA polymerase 3 that continues the synthesis process in both the complementary strands. As DNA polymerase 3 elongates each strand in 5 to 3' prime direction, helicase continues to unwind double helix, one strand called the leading strand, elongates continuously in the direction of a widening replication bubble. The DNA polymerase on the opposite strand travels in the opposite direction. Therefore, the primers must make additional RNA primers for the strand as the replication bubble widens. The DNA polymerase 3 adds nucleotide to the new primer. Primase continues to add new primers as the bubble widens. And this process continues in the leading strand synthesis as well as the lagging strand synthesis. Lagging because small fragments are generated. The fragments of the DNA produced on the strands are called Okazaki fragments. Each is 1000 to 2000 bases long. Together, they make up what is known as a lagging strand. A leading and a lagging strand are associated with each of the two replication forks in replication bubble. DNA synthesis is still not complete because the new strands have segments of RNA in them. An enzyme called DNA polymerase 1 removes the RNA nucleotides one by one and adds DNA nucleotides in their place. Notice the small nicks are left 
in the new strands of the DNA. An enzyme called DNA ligase seals the NICs by catalyzing the formation of phosphodiester bond, although the DNA is shown here is flattened from uh, this chirality. But the DNA actually assumes a double helix form as its synthesized DNA synthesis is complete. When DNA replicates, the enzyme helicase separates the DNA strands. Single-stranded DNA binding proteins then stabilizes the unwounded uh, template DNA, keeping it as an extended single-stranded state so that it can be copied by DNA polymerase. One new DNA strand is called the leading strand, which forms from its 5' prime to 3' prime end by action of DNA polymerase 3. A sliding clamp forms a ring around the DNA and maintains the association of DNA and polymerase, allowing the uninterrupted synthesis of many thousands of nucleotides of the DNA. The machinery at the replication fork includes helicase and a primase enzyme. Primase creates short RNA segments called primers on one of the template DNA strands. The RNA primers allow DNA polymers to initiate DNA synthesis along the strand, forming short segments called Okazaki fragments that collectively form the lagging strand. A structure called the clamp loading protein associated with the DNA polymerase molecule on both the parental strands of the DNA. The clamp loading protein is also bound to helicase. These associations made by the clamp loading protein coordinated uh, the simultaneous synthesis of both DNA strands at the fork. Note that the two strands of the double helix run in opposite directions. They are anti-parallel, while the leading strand can continuously synthesize in the direction of the replication fork movement. The lagging strand templates must be folded so that its polymerase can create DNA in the 5 to 3 prime direction, which is reverse of the leading strand, and still can move in the same direction because the overall movement of the fork is same. Using the 3' prime end of the primer, DNA polymerase 3 lays down new DNA in the 5 to 3' prime direction until it reaches previously synthesized Okazaki fragment. The DNA polymerase then dissociates from the DNA but remains attached to the clamp loading protein. The clamp loading protein adds a new clamp and places the DNA polymerase at the next primer to initiate formation of another Okazaki fragment. This process keeps repeated several times until lagging strand catches up with leading strand synthesis. Only DNA polymerase 1 replaces the DNA primers with DNA. Finally, DNA ligase seals the nick of the Okazaki fragments.